What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be going over the best civilizations in Rise of Kingdoms. Man, just saying that reminded me that this game used to be called Rise of Civilizations. I can't believe how long it's been. Anyway, civilizations are one of the first decisions that you make in this game. There are plenty of civilizations here to choose from, and I've put off making this video for like nine months or something like that because I thought they were going to release new civilizations earlier in the year. I thought they were going to release new civs around like March or something like that. And March came and went and uh, I don't know. I blinked. I fell asleep for five minutes and boom, here we are. It's October. It's the middle of October. How is it the 17th of October? October just started like 30 minutes. Anyway, this year is flying by, but also it's taking an eternity. Regardless, this video is long overdue, right? This video is long overdue. I didn't want to make it in, in, in fear of them releasing new civs and then the video is immediately outdated. But at this point, it looks like civilizations are just not going to be updated soon. I don't know. Hopefully they are, but uh, it looks like Lilith doesn't care that what that much, which means that you also shouldn't care that much about your civilization. And I know that that is a controversial thing to say. Uh, and if you're a late game T5 whale, you're going to, you're already typing in the comments say a section saying, Oh, Omni arc so stupid. He's so dumb guys. 90% of the players in this game, uh, their experience is not going to change with a 5% boost in a specific stat for a specific troop type. With that being said, right? Uh, this picking your civilization is not something you should lose sleep over. It's a micro optimization for later in the game. So if you just started your city hall 11 and you're stressing out, trying to figure out which civilization to pick, whichever you started with is fine for now. Okay. You, it, it don't worry about it it's not gonna change your gameplay if you if you jump to a different sieve with that being said once you hit city hall you know 24 25 you start pushing late game then you may start to be looking for some more micro optimizations for your uh your gameplay your experience your armies so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go over each civilization and i'm gonna tell you whether i recommend you use it or not or uh, i'll give you an, an example of a situation or a type of player that may want to use that civilization so before we begin of course you get a free civilization change around city hall 10 or 12 i don't really remember when it is but you get one for free so you don't have to spend these 10,000 gems at least that first time you can change it for free okay so if you're not sure which to pick even at the end of this video just don't worry just wait until your city hall 24 25 figure out what you want to do with your account and then you can change for free now it's also worth noting that with the recent update you can actually get your uh, alliance credits much faster by trading in some of the stuff that you don't need in the alliance reclaim portion of the alliance shop so you can get a ton of alliance credits this way also from building flags and alliance plots and things like that and the civ change in here is two million uh individual credits for ten thousand gems i think that's a pretty decent exchange rate i don't know i didn't do the math you guys let me know but i think this is a good use for your individual credits if you really want an, a civ change Did this Mulan event bug out for anybody else too? Uh, I just got 20 free Mulan sculptures today just by logging in. I, I don't really understand how that happened. I just claimed this again for the third time. I'm confused. All right, enough stalling. Let's jump into this. Okay, let's talk about Rome. Rome gives you the infantry special unit, the Legionary. I don't even know if I said that right, but it also gives you 5% infantry defense. 5% march speed across the board and 10% food gathering speed. This is an excellent civilization to pick if you're going to be a late game infantry main player. You have a ton of infantry armies out in the open field, or perhaps you have the best Constantine Charles to defend flags for your alliance or your kingdom or whatever. This is a very solid choice to pick. Infantry defense is a great stat to have, especially for infantry. Um, so overall, if you are looking to be a hardcore infantry player, this is probably one of your best options let's talk about germany this is a very popular t5 well late game uh choice for a lot of players the reason for that is because you got the teutonic knights which look badass you also have the five percent cavalry attack which 
I'm sure you guys know Attila Takeda is very, very powerful as a rally combo, and it has been since they came out. You also get 5% troop training speed, which when you're late game, you're not going to increase your power in any other way. You're not going to be building anything because everything's maxed. You're not going to be researching anything because everything is maxed. Commanders give you very small amounts of power. So really, uh, troop training is what the name of the game is once everything else is finished. So getting 5% more of that is excellent. And 10% action point recovery is really good as well. If you don't have stockpiles of action point potions in your inventory, like somebody that you know might be guilty of. So late game cavalry mains, people who have Attila Takeda, this could be a great option for you or people who just in general have like Saladin and Genghis Khan and some pretty powerful uh, legendary uh, cavalry units who also want that extra troop training speed. Next, we can look at Britain and Britain is a fantastic, one of the best civilizations to start with. Um, you get 5% archer attack, which I think for most players is pretty irrelevant. You also get 5% troop training speed. So you see this show up again here, which is great. Uh, you get the longbowman special unit and you also get 20% ally garrison capacity. That's an interesting, uh, buff for a civilization. I guess that's good if your city's getting rallied, but at the same time, usually players don't reinforce a city that's getting rallied because then you take a ton of deads. So yeah. I'm not a huge fan of keeping Britain for very long. People start with her because you get Boudica, who's great for uh, leveling up your uh, commanders in the early game. Plus that troop training speed is nice, but I think eventually uh, you're going to want to switch away from Britain. I think this is a exclusively for those early game uh, levels. After that, you probably want to change. Next is France and France has become really interesting lately. And there's a couple of reasons why. Okay. First of all, you get the special unit throwing axeman which is an infantry unit pretty cool right that's a pretty cool perk to have uh you don't see anything mentioning infantry in here so that's kind of surprising right it could have been anything you get three percent troop health across the board so by now you might be thinking okay well let's compare that to the other infantry one that we've seen here you get five percent defense or three percent health so how does that stack up well First and foremost, I think the Legionary is probably a slightly better unit than the Throwing Axeman, but troop health is a more important stat than troop defense. Now, of course, 5% troop defense, I think is probably better than 3% troop health, unless your city is getting rallied because this is universal for every single troop type. This means that your siege get 3% more health, your cavalry get 3% more health, your infantry get 3% more health, and your archers get 3% more health. So if your city is getting rallied and you have an even distribution of all three of those, it's effectively like 12% more stats. So yeah, if you're worried about your city getting hit, this is a really great buff. And not only that, it's health, which I, I feel like a broken record, but health is the best stat in the game, if for no other reason than because it's the hardest to get. Now, you also get 10% wood gathering speed, which you need wood to train your infantry. So there you go, throwing axemen, that's good. And 20% hospital healing speed. That is deceptively good, especially now after that atrocious healing update that I'm still upset about. And I think a lot of players are still upset about most of which most players don't even remember that healing update because it doesn't affect them at all. But for the players that actually fight in this game, uh, we remember it. We still hate it. This helps you a ton. 20% hospital healing speed means you're getting more value out of those instant helps from your alliance when you're trying to speed heal down your uh, your hospitals during KVK or any other a time where you're going to be fighting in the open field or just waging war in general in this game. 20% hospital healing speed is crazy. It's going to save you a ton of speed ups over the course of a KVK, assuming you're actually fighting, right? So as a late game pick, France is an incredible choice and it's personally the one that I switched to. Uh, I started this game as China switched to Spain because I thought I was going to be a cavalry main uh, and then quickly realized that uh, it's just much easier and better to be an infantry main. So here we are. I picked France and I am happy with this choice. 
uh, again I save a ton of speed ups in kvk healing down my hospital the next choice is of course Spain and Spain gives you the conquistadors which are really cool units I think they have the highest attack technically uh, even though I think Arabia gives you 5% attack which even though the mom look has uh, uh, th their attack is lower than the conquistador I think if you factor in the cav attack I think it goes up higher technically regardless conquistadors really great units uh in this game you get five percent cavalry defense you also get ten percent extra experience which is good and twenty percent resource production now uh, I, I want to say that in the past I have recommended Spain to free-to-play players and new players into the game and I still think they're a fine choice remember we are talking micro optimizations with your civilization choice right they're still a really great choice defense is a really nice uh, statistic especially when you're applying it to conquistadors which already have high attack so I think overall you're getting a really powerful cavalry unit uh, which is great the experience gained is good in the early game and not so good later down the line when you already have all the important commanders level 60 you're rarely ever leveling up commanders anymore i'm kind of at that point now where i'm just stacking experience tombs because i don't really know what to do with them um and of course there are some commanders that i still have an expertise or gotten to level 60 for, for that matter but um it's just it is what it is the 20 percent resource production uh, I did the math and it's it's fine of course it adds up over time which is great um, but it's nothing crazy right like the resources you get in your city pale in comparison to the resources that you can kind of uh, gather across the map right um, and so this is a nice buff but it's not it's nothing crazy right and so again if you picked Spain and I think Spain is a great pick if you're a cavalry main right of course it's a great pick Pelagius if you're just starting out is a really great cavalry commander in the epic tier you still see him used a little bit by some uh some later game uh late game players who need to flesh out five armies with uh, all calves so yeah good choice for cavalry players probably not the best choice for most people who are free to play low spenders who are going to be investing in, in commanders like Yi song a and Richard and things like that and we I made a whole video talking about that let's move on to China I don't see a reason why anybody would start with China or continue using China honestly um, obviously the reason you would start with it is for Sun Tzu of course um, but yeah I, I just I don't see it here you get I think this is I'm pretty sure this is a archer unit and archers just for free to play low spenders most players probably shouldn't really focus too much on archers in my opinion um you get three percent troop defense which is across the board so if your city gets rallied that it converts into 12 percent, which is nice really solid stuff there but uh, i think health is a better stat than defense so if you're going to pick between the two i think there's a clear choice there plus you also get an, an infantry unit whereas this is a uh an, an archer unit you also get five percent actual point recovery which is great now if we take a look over here at germany we get 10 percent action point recovery China gets gypped weird uh I don't know why the game balances it that way but regardless you get five percent building speed which is fine early game but you're gonna max out your buildings uh sooner than you'll max out your tech even so yeah um not really a huge fan of China I can see why you would start with it but after that you probably want to change Japan there is really no reason to pick Japan um you do get the Samurais which are an infantry unit but uh troop attack is the least valuable of the stats march speed by your scouts it's, 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 it, who, who cares right it is what it is and then five percent resource gathering is good but does it over does it compensate for all the other stats that you don't really care about i don't think so if you have a farm account maybe you should make your farm account japan i think that's a good choice because then you can gather more and then you can scout things faster so if you see enemies in the open field and you don't want to scout them with your main because your main account maybe has a bubble up you can scout it with your uh, farm and the scout will go faster just a thought don't pick japan seriously don't pick japan unless it's your farm korea is another one where i don't really see a use for korea unless you are a whale who is whaling up uh you get the five percent archer defense again for most players i don't think they should be focusing on archers if you're a big spender and you've got it or even a medium spender if you're really investing in archers then sure maybe that's a good option the 15 percent hospital capacity is really good it's really enticing especially in kvk uh and i don't know i guess it's actually probably more important when you're not in kvk because 
kvk already gives you more hospital capacity but regardless uh you could be in the fight for a little bit longer without having to worry about your hospitals so this could save you some deads if you're not paying attention really good stuff there especially if your city gets hit while you're offline you'll save 15 percent more of that hospital so that's really good the three percent research speed is the reason that you would really pick korea while you're whaling up because you want to get every single ounce of research speed that you can get when you are leveling up that uh, your account for those really big t5 uh, or pre t5 researches so i see uh if you're uh if you're in the late mid game um i can see an instance where some players who've got maybe an extra 10,000 gems to blow or an extra 2 million or, or 4 million, right? Because you would want to change to Korea, get to T5, and then change away from Korea uh, <laughs> for most players. Um, if you're really uh, if you're really looking for the most op optimizations for getting to T5 as soon as possible, you can pick Korea. But I don't think it's a, it's a switch that you should really make if you're free to play. Because, yeah, you'll get 3% faster research speed getting to T5 then you're probably gonna you're gonna switch away later and so you're gonna have to invest a lot of either gems or individual credits and those individual credits you probably should spend more on like passport pages in case you have to leave your um leave your kingdom as a free-to-play player it's very difficult to do so korea most players are going to pass on korea and i just it, that it is what it is arabia is our next option and this increases cavalry attack by five percent again cavalry attack ah, i just I hate to see the attack you know i just don't really like the attack buff it is what it is right it is what it is you get the mom look uh, special unit here looks pretty badass the actual city looks pretty cool because you got the gold roofs damage dealt to barbarians and other huge units uh by 10 percent uh is anyone really struggling dealing damage to barbarians or neutral units i don't think so but hey uh, damage dealt by rallied armies increased by 5%. <clears throat> well, now there's a good option to pick uh, Arabia. So if you're leading an Attila to Kata rally, this may be a really solid choice, right? If your alliance relies on you for your Attila to Kata rallies, then here you go. Arabia is going to have that rallied army deal 5% more damage, which is crazy, right? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Again, it's a small percentage, but when you consider how much damage you're going to be dealing over the course of a rally, it could be pretty savage having that on there. Um, and then also, you know, the, I don't love attack, right? But, um, if you're rallying stuff, I guess you would want a, as much attack as, as possible, right? Um, it, it is what it is. I think Arabia, again, solid choice for that niche of player, but most players are not in that niche and therefore most players probably don't want arabia next we have the ottoman empire and honestly i think this might be my favorite looking civilization as far as the buildings go at least the city hall looks super cool right super cool um you do get the janissary i guess is how you say it the archer unit which is what it is increases archer health by five percent now health is a great stat and five percent's a lot of it so if you care about archers this is a great choice right really really great choice five percent march speed hey i'll take it i like march speed a lot and it's difficult to get march speed uh once you've maxed out all your tech and stuff you know you have the windswept set and that's pretty much it finally you get five percent active skill damage so hey that's a really nice buff if you're leading like an edward rally this is a really great option to pick because you are just all over the place with perks right so there's definitely a player there's definitely a, a role uh that would really like the ottoman empire as a choice if you have rallies and you've got Yi song a in that rally then hey you get more active skill damage from your Yi song a so there's plenty of of rallies that may really benefit from being an ottoman ottoman civilization uh but again as we've seen with other civilization picks here I don't know if this is the best choice for a majority of the players and finally we have byzantium this is also another really attractive choice i almost picked byzantium over france and i think i made the right choice but you do get five percent cavalry health which we've talked about this that's the best stat right and so that's great for your cavalry you do get a cavalry special unit which is cool i don't know if this one looks as cool as some of the other ones which is an important factor you want to look cool on the battlefield i also don't know if the civilization looks that great either but regardless um stone gathering speed by 10 percent is nice because stone is one of the harder materials to get harder um mats out in the open field right you obviously gold is the hardest and then stone would be second hardest technically so that's cool uh and the 15 percent hospital capacity is really really great we've talked about this 
this already with what was it korea um 15 could save you a lot of dead troops if you're not paying attention if your city gets rallied etc there's uh there's a lot of reasons why you might want extra hospital capacity if you're always online and you never get rallied and you're super careful and you're a pro player then maybe you don't need that extra hospital capacity but Byzantium, I think, is a good choice for uh, cavalry main players who want that extra hospital capacity to really fight as long as they possibly can in the open field and to make their cavalry a, a little bit more fleshed out with some nice health stats that's a little bit difficult to get. So with that being said, I personally think that France is the best civilization. I think this probably doesn't come as a surprise to you because I am the France civilization. I chose this after months, over a year of, of, of thinking about which civilization I wanted. And honestly, the reason I didn't change to France sooner is because I thought that we're going to release new ones and then they never did. Uh, so before this last KBK, I did, uh, or I think um, right around the time my city got rallied is when I changed to France uh, because I knew that <clears throat> that extra troop health for that rally is going to be a big deal but the hospital healing speed is again it's just so good for speed healing down your hospital and even when you heal a bulk a huge batch of troops you're just saving so many speed ups which i think is a really valuable thing to save later in the game uh when you are you know a t5 player who's fighting all the time and again i'm not saying france is the best civilization i think it's just for a late game player who might be free to play or a low spender i think france is arguably the best civilization for that type of player if you're following the video that i made where i talk about the best investments in legendaries that you can make as a free-to-play player if you're following that route then france is probably going to be the civilization for you now you can also make the case again for germany i think a lot of t5 end game players pick germany because you get that troop training speed you get the extra extra action points the teutonic knights are awesome we also see a lot of rome as well because again we're focusing on infantry which is a really great uh, pick for free to play or low spenders march speed is great i think uh these three are probably some of the best choices in the game and it really depends on you specifically uh and and then of course if your if your niche and your role for your alliance or your kingdom falls into one of the categories that i talked about before where you may want byzantium or ottoman or arabia or whatever the case is then of course you might want to go ahead and pick that so again i'm not saying everyone go switch to france what i'm saying is most players if you're following the path that i've talked about in previous videos probably will benefit the most from picking France. And I think that you won't be disappointed. Anyway, guys, with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. Comment down below any questions that you have about civilizations, civ changes, recommendations, things along those lines. Or if you have any insight that you think maybe I missed in this video, of course, please drop it down in the comment section below. As always, my social media links are going to be in the description as well. So make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and on Twitch, where I do live stream Rise of Kingdoms. Finally, there's a link in the description below to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Blue Stacks, and honestly, it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms if you have an older phone you'll probably experience fewer crashes by playing it on your computer and like i said it's absolutely free so go ahead and click that link down below and give it a shot with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace